Hi everyone, welcome to Asia Net Samvad. I am Bhavna Nagaya. We have a wonderful guest with us. His language of speaking is music. His language of speaking is nature. His language of speaking is environment. He had every opportunity to be a film music director, but he has chosen a different way. We have with us two-time Grammy Award winner Ricky Cage in our studio. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Bhavna. Great to be on your show again. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So for us, it, it's it's a bit nostalgic because a decade ago, uh, you have given a wonderful song for us. So again, you are in our studio. So how are you feeling right now? No, of course, it's amazing. Life has come a full circle. I have, uh, you know, I composed that song Jai Hai Kannada Tai, which is about the nature of Karnataka so many years ago. And now I'm back in the studio. So it feels really good. Um, if, I, if we can freeze a time for a second, if you look back, how do you describe yourself? <laughs> how I describe myself? I think I'm pretty much obsessed with music. Uh, that's the kind of person I am. Uh, I've been a musician ever since I remember. So my whole life I've been two things, a musician and an environmentalist. And uh, you know, even right now when I'm talking to you, there is a background score that I'm composing in my head about <laughs> our conversation. When I walk on the street, I, my steps are in a particular rhythm. So I'm completely obsessed with music and I'm obsessed with the natural world and nature. So that's basically me. Environmentalist and music composer. Correct. This sounds different words. But you brought them together. So tell me about your journey, choosing music as your passion and uh, uh, your love towards nature. So while growing up, uh, you know, I grew up in the middle of nowhere. There were a lot of like, you know, trees and wooded areas around my home. And uh, we used to have a lot of creepy crawly animals like, you know, like snakes and lizards oh. and frogs and insects coming into our home. And my parents and my teachers used to always tell me that as soon as you see these animals, step on them or kill them or, you know, or run away from them. And my question to them always used to be that if we are supposed to just kill them as soon as we see them, then why do they exist? They must be having some purpose. Right. And of course, now I know that every single species of animal, where no matter how seemingly insignificant or small, plays a very important role in the ecosystem, which keeps all of us alive. And it's this delicate balance that keeps all of us alive. And at the end of the day, how did music start? Music started off as sounds from nature. Correct. You know, sounds of the animals, sounds of the birds, sounds of the trees. And then we human beings started taking objects from nature, making bamboo flutes and boxes of seeds, bowls of water, animal skin to play percussion on. So music and nature has always been, mm. you know, one and the same. And uh, I've always been in love with nature through music. Um, you had a plenty of opportunity to become a film music director. Correct. But you have chosen your own way. Uh, I have seen many mu musicians who want to be famous, who want to uh, go behind money, f uh, fame, everything. But you were not that person. Uh, you chose your own way and this is what you are now, <laughs> globally well-known uh, musician, music composer. Uh, what made you to decide that? So very early on in my career, I had decided that uh, I'm not going to be part of the movie industry, even though since I'm from Karnataka, I did three movies with three the movies, great... Three uh, serials uh, yeah. and one, one Rajotsava song. Correct, correct. Yeah. Uh, with, uh, no, of course, I've done a lot of work in Kannada. But the thing is that uh, I've done three movies with uh, Mr. Ramesh Arvind, who I absolutely admire. So I only worked with one director. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, uh, my interest has never been into making movies, mm. simply because when it comes to movies, it's somebody else that's telling you what to do when it comes to music. You know, it, your, your sensibilities is based on a film script, on a director. And for me, I wanted to make music as an art form. I wanted to make music based on my own sensibilities, what I feel strongly about. So that is the reason why I never uh, got into the film industry. And also the other thing is that when I was very young, when I was about 19 years old and I was exploring this idea that I'm going to be a professional musician, I realized that I wanted to break cultural barriers. Oh. And when it came to Bollywood music and film music in general uh, across languages, uh, musicians, when they go abroad, they get full audiences, they get full stadiums, they get large audiences. But those audiences are only people from the Indian diaspora. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like, you know, when a famous composer or a famous uh, singer goes abroad and plays like New Jersey or New York or Moscow or someplace, they only get Indian people in the audience. Whereas for me, I wanted to take my Indian music and I wanted people from all over the world to listen to it. And I wanted to break cultural barriers. And this breaking of cultural barriers, it's not been done by the film industry. 
it has actually been done by the classical musicians like if you were, uh, while pandit ravi shankar was alive if you had gone to a concert of his then people from all over the world would be at his uh, concert same thing with pandit vishwamohan bhat ustad zakir hussain ustad alla rakha ali akbar khan all these amazing people so i wanted to go in that direction mm-hmm. so i wanted to break cultural barriers i wanted people who are normally not exposed to indian music to learn and to uh, listen to and uh, to appreciate indian music and that's how my career was made you used uh, every single platform globally to uh, to underline indian philosophy yeah it can be vasudeva kutumbakam it can be asatoma sadgamaya winds of samsara yeah so how the world received it no it's been amazing because india has got a wealth of ancient knowledge uh, which the world can truly benefit from like if you look at vasudeva kutumbakam itself it means coexistence it means the world is one family but nowadays what happens is that we are we sort of lost that meaning um, all over the world when we think about coexistence we only think about coexistence between you know hindus muslims sikhs christians jews buddhists jains basically different parts of the human species when actually vasudeva kutumbakam is much more than that it is about coexistence with all life and that is what is key to our survival you know coexisting with all life the forest the wildlife and also the elements of nature that is the water we drink the air we breathe the land we walk on and if we just learn how to coexist the way our ancient people uh, of india would coexist with uh, with nature i think we we would solve all our problems whenever i hear your music uh, i can feel the nature in it yeah. i can feel the green in it uh, i can feel the natural music in it whenever you start composing what will be your thought process so it usually starts with something that comes to my mind you know like for example i walk into a forest and i see a lot of beauty so then i want to celebrate that beauty like for example in my grammy winning album divine tides, divine tides i had yes. this song called himalayas and that was because i visited the himalayas i visited the himalayas for uh, performing for our indian army so i did a concert in ladakh for 12000 army soldiers it was one of the greatest experiences of my life you know standing on stage and uh, surrounded by mountains at an elevation of 12000 feet so it literally took our breath away and uh, you know so that was a very profound experience of mm-hmm. actually being in the himalayas and playing my music to that many army soldiers so i needed to encapsulate that in my music so i created a song called himalayas uh, you know just just as a memory and just to celebrate the himalayas then i've got another song called love divine where i read about human and elephant conflict you know this problem that is happening between humans and elephants right. where it's almost like a war like situation that's happening in the fringe areas of forests where there's a loss of life loss of property on both sides of the human side and the elephant side so then that is when i thought that all right you know i need to make a song about this i need to express my feelings through the song mm-hmm. so then i created this song called love divine mm-hmm. so that is how it works it always starts with something that i feel strongly about and then it's all about me trying to communicate that feeling through music mm-hmm. for this question i know the answer but still i want to hear from sure. hear from you um what place you like you like you like cities or uh, what what you like i mean where to uh, where you want to live so i mean i would love to live in the middle of the forest that would be my favorite place but i would also need a strong internet connection <laughs> 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 okay. So, so that's why so I would say a mix between the cities and uh, and uh, even rural areas. I love uh, visiting rural areas. I I've done collaborations with tribal musicians and tribal farmers in rural areas from Chhattisgarh, Orissa, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, North Karnataka in Andhra Pradesh in Naraku Valley. Mm. So I love being in these places. Also I love being in the forest. So basically I would say a mix of all these different you know landscapes is where i would like to live not just in one place but currently my home is obviously bangalore and it's always going to be my home mm. simply because of one reason because my dogs are in bangalore okay so you <laughs> can travel with family How everywhere many dogs you have? i've got two dogs two dogs and okay. you can travel with family everywhere okay. but uh, but you know you cannot travel with your dogs everywhere so i believe that wherever your dogs are that's where your home is <laughs> okay so wonderful <laughs> okay in a very young age uh, you started joining hands with the uh, un organizations correct and many leaders came together to congratulate you uh, a very rare indian musicians get that honor so what made you uh, to think like so the i've been working with the united nations for more than 10 years now and i'm their goodwill ambassador i'm their global ambassador for various organizations so i have always loved working with the united nations because it, it's a global organization it's an intergovernmental organization but most importantly the united nations does not believe 
in working against a government no matter how much let's say they they dislike a government okay if it's a democratically elected government they always want to work with the government Ach. you know and they want to uh, figure out solutions together they want to work together to figure out solutions mm -hmm. and that's how my philosophy has always been uh, so even though protest is extremely important activism is extremely important that's not the path that i've taken mm -hmm. for me it's all about inspiring people into action you know in the, uh, there's a very famous saying that you know that at the end of the day we as human beings we'll only protect things that we love we will only love things that we understand and we will only understand things that we are taught so for me my mission is to make everyone fall in love with the natural world and nature and hopefully through that love mm -hmm. we will find it within ourselves to protect have you been in any situation where you have to choose either uh, commercial music or your passion um that's not been there for the last few years because i've been very clear about it that okay. the only kind of music that i'm going to put out is music that i'm not embarrassed about okay that music <laughs> that i feel comes truly from me so for the last few years like for example in 2014 whatever music that you hear from my uh, from my from 2014 of mine uh, that would define me as what kind of a person i was in 2014 2018 that's the kind of person i was in 2018 so it's very easy to find out what kind of a person i am just by listening to my music wow. because every single piece of music that i've made since then is a part of me that's wonderful let's uh, go back to 2015 yeah. where you won uh, first grammy award for uh, winds of samsara correct how was the, the moment now of course it was an exhilarating moment because uh, you know a lot of people say that uh, that you know that i'm i don't like awards and you know and i'm not into awards and all of that stuff and uh, uh, to an extent they are true th what they're saying is correct but whenever you look at awards they can be looked at as two ways hmm. one is basically vanity you know mm -hmm. that oh i won an award i'm better than everybody else but that's the wrong way to look at an award okay i believe that awards are really important because they give you a platform okay and they give you credibility they give you a platform and especially for my kind of music which has such a strong message about positive social impact for society for the environment i need a wider and wider audience to reach out to so these awards give you a platform so that you can do bigger and better things number one and number two is that you can reach out to more people and more people will take you seriously because you won an award so that's why for me awards are really really important because it gives you that platform to have a bigger voice which award would you like to compare indian award to grammy so the thing about the grammys is that even though the grammys are given out in america it is not actually considered to be an american award okay it is it is just like the olympics mm -hmm. where you know anybody anywhere in the world can win a grammy you know i am an indian person sitting and making music in india but i have won two grammys there are people from all over the world who won these awards because it's the biggest music award in the whole world so one cannot compare okay. an award from any country uh, to the grammys because every like india has got a lot of music awards like jima and film fair and all of that stuff but you have to be a resident of india to actually win these awards mm -hmm. whereas the grammys you can be living anywhere in the world and you can win it just like the olympics okay so that is why i believe that the grammys is a great award because it's very inclusive and uh, and uh, you can be sitting down in any country in any corner of the globe but if you've got excellence in music you can actually win the award so i'm very grateful for that do you think there is a lack of a pure music award in india um true because the thing but more important than that the issue in india when it comes to awards in general is that the celebrities are bigger than the award so like uh, what happens is that when it is an award and you need to invite uh, you need to invite celebrities so that you get more ratings you know so that is the issue in india and that will take time to solve it's not mm -hmm. like it's unsolvable it will take time to solve whereas uh, with these international awards like the oscars the cannes film festival in france and you know and the uh, the grammys the award is bigger than the star mm -hmm. so the stars are like you know dying to win the award or they really uh, they mark their calendar off because they want to attend the award and all of that stuff so that is where the awards get a little more credibility because uh, those awards juries and all of that stuff they do not care about who the artist is mm -hmm. they just care about musical excellence and they do not care whether the artist is going to attend the ceremony or not they just give the award to the person who mm -hmm. deserves it the best many musicians or youngsters young student music students are worried about their future yeah. in india what do you say about it so i would say that a, a career in the arts is a very very good career it's very very good career but uh, you know one has to figure out for themselves whether they can actually do this career or not so i believe that each and every person who wants to become a musician who wants to become an artist or a filmmaker like one of these non traditional career paths 
uh, they have to be these two things along with being a fantastic artist you have to be really really good at your art mm -hmm. but in addition to that you have to have leadership capabilities you have to have leadership capabilities because uh, you have to work with teams because art is not an isolated uh, you know right. entity you have to have teams you have to have musicians you have to have filmmakers you have to have people who make a videos makeup artists all of that stuff so you have to have that good leadership capabilities and second thing is that you have to be an entrepreneur because you have to constantly sell a product and that product is you you know so you have to constantly be selling yourself and you have to be really really good at selling yourself because mm -hmm. nobody else is going to believe in you as much as you believe in yourself true so that's why it's important to sell yourself and coming back to the leadership thing many people ask me that oh but i cannot convince my parents how do mm -hmm. i convince my parents that, that's a problem uh, youngsters no but face. i believe that you have to have the leadership quality to to be able to convince your parents because if you cannot convince your parents you are not going to be able to convince the audience that you are a good musician mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that's what if you cannot convince your parents then maybe engineering and medicine and mba is better for you mm -hmm. but the thing is that the only way you should become an artist if you are able to convince your parents no matter how strict they are okay. you should be able to convince your parents and your parents should be absolutely convinced that you're going to be an amazing artist and you're going to be successful at what you're doing and only then become an artist were you been in this situation ever many many times many times <laughs> my okay. parents hated the fact that i wanted to become a musician okay. because they felt music is a hobby you know okay. you have to have some sort of a profession like how can you be a musician so uh, so i had a lot of uh, fights and arguments with my parents and then i reached a compromise with my father okay that my father told me that finish off a degree in dental surgery that is a bds degree and once you finish off that degree he'll never question me again for the rest of my life mm -hmm. so i went to 5 years of college and uh, you know and i studied dentistry and then at the end of 5 years i did not know anything about dentistry mm -hmm. but i got a degree which is a testimony to the education system nowadays <laughs> but nevertheless i got the degree and then uh, and then i got into full time music but even while i was doing my dentistry from 9 to 5 i would go to college and after 5 o'clock i would be in some studio doing music professionally so my parents were already convinced by the time i reached my final year of dentistry that this guy is going to be a successful uh, musician so there was no question about it after i got my degree i gave the certificate to my father and then my father was very happy with me becoming a musician because he knew that i was already doing well as a musician did they ever questioned you about your path because uh, your uh, as per my knowledge your family comes from a cinema background especially your grandpa no but uh, that, that's only my grandfather that's grandfather. it yeah grandfather okay. but everybody else are doctors in my family so that's why so that's why it was very hard on me because my dad's a second generation doctor and my dad's like a very very big time academic like studied all over the world studied in london studied in america studied in uh, molana azad medical college in uh, in new delhi so so it was very difficult to convince him <laughs> okay so mr kage a lot of things uh, yet to speak so but uh, our executive chairman rajesh kalra uh, would like to ask some questions uh, kalra sir good afternoon please go ahead yeah good afternoon and uh, th thank you ricky i think i was listening into some of the questions being asked obviously they are very well prepared and i came in principally to thank you for making the music and also to tell you that you know what a great uh, you know uh, thing you're doing for this nation thank you so just much just had a very simple couple of questions one of them is you know india is known as the land of ragas you know we've read that some of them could actually change weather patterns if rendered well do you think that uh, we have influenced the world music in a way that it's being recognized because of the ragas that we have no absolutely because uh, when it comes to indian music academics indian uh, the indian music is so well fleshed out in terms of ragas where you know you have scales which are so well defined but more importantly than that i've always believed that it's uh, indian classical musicians that are doing so much of work in spreading indian culture and indian traditions when it comes to music all over the world because they're constantly breaking cultural barriers as i'd mentioned earlier in this interview and not only that when it comes to younger musicians in india there is this thought that if you want to get global recognition then you have to play music in english you have to play western music you have to basically cater to the western audiences by playing their kind of music but that's not true at all because if you look at the people who have actually won grammy awards in the past and people who have gotten massive western recognition in the past like people like pandit ravi shankar pandit vishwamohan bhat ustad zakir hussain and of course me uh, too uh, the thing is that uh, all all these amazing people have basically dug deep into their own roots and they have tried to figure out what is it that defines us as indian people and they've played indian music all over the world and they've gotten recognition for that and in fact i've not found a single person in india 
who has played Western music and gotten recognition globally. So I believe that in India, this should be an encouragement to all younger musicians that please dig deep into your roots, understand what is it that makes you Indian culturally and showcase that to the world and you will get global recognition for that. Oh, nice. But tell me when there is so much of global recognition for the kind of music that we actually have, uh, you think within the country there is as much respect for the Indian music as it should be? That is a very, very good question. And in fact, I've got a term for that. What I call, it may be controversial, but it's what I call the Pandit Ravi Shankar syndrome. Now, if you go on the street and you ask people who is Pandit Ravi Shankar, everybody know him as being a sitar player. You, are, you, you, you ask them questions about him, everybody knows daughters are Nora Jones, Anushka Shankar. He's won the Bharat Ratna, made sitar popular all over the world. But you ask them, name one song of Pandit Ravi Shankar, nobody in India knows. Or hum one song of his, nobody knows. Or forget that, name one album of Pandit Ravi Shankar, nobody knows. So everybody know him as a personality, but nobody knows his music. And that is a problem unique to India because if you go to San Francisco, the Bay Area, you go to New York, you ask people to hum music of Pandit Ravi Shankar, everybody knows that. And everybody knows his albums, everybody knows his songs. So that is something that needs to change in India. And I believe that the reason for this being uh, is that, you know, that the film industries all over India have got such a huge grip on the music industry that people cannot look beyond that. So I believe that the younger generation will change that hopefully and it is changing slowly. How nice to know that. Uh, uh, Riki, you have repeatedly been looked at as a musician from India who is recognized uh, at the world stage. For music that has international appeal. What do you think we need to do to get more and more acceptance of Indian music at the world stage? even more than what it is right now, not just the classical music. Is there anything else that can be done? Look at the tribal music, look at the music, folk, folk music and all these things. Some of it I see does get, uh, you know, used here and there and people talk about it. But uh, do you see a pattern emerging or something needs to be done to do that? Absolutely. And it's very, very good that you brought up uh, the topic of folk music and tribal music and traditional uh, art forms, musical art forms in India besides the classical music traditions. So I've been working with the Baul musicians in uh, Bengal and in fact I did this documentary along with two of my friends uh, which is now on the Mubi platform. So now the thing is that uh, this particular film was four years in the making where we showcased Baul musicians who are leading the life of Baul music. Not just you know Baul musicians who are using Baul music as a genre of music but people who are leading the Baul music life uh, you know the you know because at the end of the day it's a thousand year old tradition it's a beautiful tradition uh, of empowerment it's a beautiful tradition of people moving away from the caste system so uh, the thing is that uh, we need to empower more and more of these uh, traditional uh, folk forms which, which have got a wealth of knowledge not just in music but in terms of lyrics you know about how to coexist with nature in terms of how to live peacefully with all human beings with the plants with the animals with the elements of nature as i described also about how to lead your life in a very simplistic fashion so these are all a wealth of knowledge that i think the world can truly benefit from i've also collaborated with you know with tribal farmers in araku valley did a song called what the one with earth song also, uh, also with uh, uh, tribal musicians from North Karnataka. So the thing is that I believe that these art forms need to be showcased. They need to be, uh, they need to be recorded. They need to be, uh, uh, you know, because at the end of the day, these art forms are have never been documented because they have been orally passed down from from generation to generation. And I think with digital recording technology within everybody's reach, I think we need to highlight these art forms. We need to record them and we need to showcase them uh, to the rest of the world. And also keep them for posterity because we might lose them otherwise. Absolutely, absolutely. Great. Uh, you've heard that, uh, uh, what was the gentleman who has made a full song based on just the recordings of the nature in, the, in one year? Remember that? True. And I love those kind of recordings where you use sounds of nature and you create music out of that. But then again, it's an ideological difference from me, even though I love listening to that kind of music. It's the difference between taking a photograph and the difference between uh, making a painting. Now, when you like, let's say I, if I were to take a photograph of you, then based on the lighting conditions, based on your mood for the moment, I take a verbatim picture of exactly how you are. And that's what's documented. Whereas if I were to make a painting of you, then it's open to a little bit of interpretation where I can bring a little bit of your soul into the painting. 
So that's what I believe when I represent nature through music. Rather than taking a photograph and actually recording the music as it is, I prefer to use musical instruments like the flute, like the sitar, like the human voice, like an orchestra to represent the soul of what I am experiencing within nature and creating music on that. So that is the way that I prefer making my music rather than actually recording sounds and making music on that. Oh, wonderful. Sounds good. Bhavna, I have no more questions. As I said, I just wanted to, you know, bang in and ask a few questions which I have done. Uh, all, all yours. Thank I've you. been, uh, you know, just uh, happy listening to his uh, responses so far. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks so much, Jiki. Thank you so much. It's an honor so to actually meet you like this. Thank you. No, no. It's, it's a pl <laughs> honor is all ours. I can yes. tell you, our entire channel is grateful that you are there. Oh, thank you. And uh, thanks, thanks to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Please thank go you. ahead. I, I might, I might uh, listen in for a while and then uh, get out. For the Westerners or the foreigners, if it comes to the Indian music. A very common people who have very less knowledge about music, they would say it's Bollywood music. Yes. How to change this situation? How to introduce them our own culture, our own music? No, I guess uh, there should be a lot more support for musical forms besides uh, Bollywood and uh, a lot more people need to create music on this. When there's a lot of content, it will get disseminated and it will get spread. Because the thing about the film music is that film music can never become popular globally in my opinion to mm -hmm. people who are non-Indians. Simply because at the end of the day, what is it? It's basically Western hip hop music, Western pop music with Indian languages as lyrics. That's what it is actually. There are very, very few, uh, you know, uh, film songs which actually go into folk traditions or go into very pure and good classical traditions. But most of it is just Western pop music with Indian uh, languages as lyrics. So I guess we need to support a lot of musicians who are creating, uh, you know, who are creating music based on folk forms and on Indian classical forms. And uh, yeah, and more and more younger people need to make music based on this so that there is a lot of content for people to listen to. What's your suggestion for the younger people? So as I said, my suggestion is just simply this, that you know, dig deep into your roots and uh, figure out what is it that makes you who you are and uh, create music on that. Because don't try to uh, beat the Western musicians at their own game. Okay. You know, because at the end of the day, a Western musician will not be able to play the sitar as well as an Indian musician because mm -hmm. it's in our blood. We yeah. understand the rags as part of our... Right. Uh, a, a part of our DNA, you know. So that is why. So, so, uh, so basically, create music about stuff that you know makes you who you are. Or let's say, even if you identify yourself as a Western musician or a rock musician, bring in an element of your surroundings because you've been living in India for so long. Mm -hmm. So don't tell me that your music is purely Western, even mm -hmm. though you've been living in India. You've been listening to so much of music in India. You've been meeting so many Indian people. You've been living around Indian people and Indian culture and traditions. So don't tell me that a part of that hasn't gotten into you, you know. It's just like, you know, that uh, if, an, uh, if an Indian person wants to make a pasta, you know, so they will look at the best of recipes from Italy or from MasterChef, make a very authentic pasta. But just before it goes on the table, there'll be some chili powder which will go into it and there'll be some turmeric powder which will go authentic into it. Authentic pasta nobody likes. <laughs> so Indians. Yeah, Indians so that's right. There'll always be a little bit of that which will go into that's it. Because that's, that's Indian how we made are. pasta. That's how we are. When I order a pizza, the first thing that goes on is chili flakes, you know, because <laughs> because that's how we are as Indian people. So it's, it has to be the same with music too. Correct, correct. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about uh, this year. It's again one of the memorable years for you. Second Grammy Award. Correct. Uh, Divine Tides. Tell us about that. So Divine Tides, uh, you know, uh, ever since I won the Grammy for my previous album in 2015, I've been wanting to make a follow up to that album. Mm -hmm. And there were lot, lots of thoughts and ideas in my mind, but I've never had the time to actually record them because of my absolutely relentless touring schedule. Like for example, in 2019, I did 70 concerts in 13 countries. Mm -hmm. So I'm just living off a suitcase, going from city to city. But then the pandemic hit in 2020, and then we all were forced to stay indoors. Correct. So I was in my studio, and then I started creating and recording this album, but then I needed a very strong collaborator. And I decided that I'm going to want to, I, I mean, I want to work with Stuart Copeland. I've grown awesome. up with posters of him on my wall and, you know, and he's been my greatest idol when it comes to music. Five-time Grammy Award winner, 75 million copies of albums sold. So then I reached out to him and to my immense luck, he said that, all right, let's work on this album together. Oh, wow. hmm. I'll give you like how much of a time you want and let's work on this album. So we worked on this album together, him in Los Angeles, me in India. I changed my sleep timing so I could match his timings okay. because our AM is their PM. Ah, yes. So that's the way it is. So, uh, so basically we worked together, became the best of friends, became very, very close. And he was almost like a father figure to me because 
he he's got children who are older than me you know so that's uh, that's the kind of relationship that we shared and of course the album became hugely successful uh, you know, we won awards all over the world and that ended with us getting nominated for the grammy and then actually winning the grammy award mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, for the musician every instrument is favorite correct they like every instrument correct for ricky cage which is the favorite instrument and why so i guess uh, for me the instrument that i play is the piano and the keyboards piano. so okay. that's my instrument uh, but at the same time i love instruments which sound as close to the human voice as possible mm-hmm. like instruments like the flute oh, the flute okay. is as expressive as the human voice you know like if you want to m- make a very emotional piece of music then either you can use the human voice or you can use the flute other instruments are the violin is also like that the sarangi is also like that mm-hmm. so all these instruments which can move a person emotionally mm-hmm. and sounds as close to the human voice those are the instruments which i absolutely love mm-hmm. till date your journey is spectacular it's beautiful but every human being ha- will be having their own dreams Correct. they fulfill it again there will be another dream so what's your future dreams and that's very true that uh, you fulfill a dream then you have another dream but then again my life went completely upside down because uh, the grammys were always considered like an unattainable dream for me like you know sitting down in india how is it even possible like you know i would just watch the grammys on television and i would be like i would not even imagine myself in that position because it was unattainable but then i won my first grammy when i was 33 and then suddenly you're like okay what is my dream right now you know because i won this the biggest music award in the world so you feel this sense of gratefulness mm. and this humility mm. that you know that what am i supposed to do now but then of course my dreams are uh, about creating a more environmentally conscious society uh, to get people to do their own part because the biggest threat in my opinion when it comes to the environment in india uh, you know you have climate change you have uh, species extinction you have loss of biodiversity deforestation you have plastics pollution air pollution but the biggest threat is the constant thought that everybody has that somebody else will make a difference you know that is not up to me you know government will make a difference intergovernmental bodies politicians leaders corporations will make a difference when the truth is that the only way we can bring about meaningful change is if we change ourselves mm-hmm. you know we uh, but everybody feel that if i stop using plastic what difference will it make mm-hmm. if i use public transportation what difference will it make you know uh, if i lead uh, my life responsibly what difference will it make but that will make such a huge difference because everybody needs to change their own lives in their own tiny capacity and in an incremental way because that is all that matters everybody should just do whatever they everybody talks about changing the world mm. but everybody should talk about changing themselves first so that is what i want to do so through the, my music man, many people say is that it is highly impossible uh, in indian society or indian kind of a, a country is it true it, it's not highly impossible it's just that we have not empowered ourselves to believe that the small tiny changes that we make within our own lives actually matter So what we need to do is that we need to empower ourselves and we do need to empower everybody else to believe that if you do the small thing in your life it will make a huge difference. You know so that is what we need to empower ourselves to believe that we matter you know mm-hmm. and the small things that we do matter. Any suggestions to the Karnataka government to empower arts arts forms? <laughs> so of course I've got plenty of suggestions always mm-hmm. but uh, what artists require is places to perform. So I think that uh, what we need is some really really good high quality international quality places to perform. Because if you go to foreign countries like for example in New York you've got Carnegie Hall in uh, in uh, Sydney you've got the Sydney Opera House. So when a tourist comes to these cities they do not care about who is performing. Mm-hmm. They just want to go to the hall to watch a performance. Okay. And I think that will encourage the arts in uh, in our city in a very very big way and in our state in a very big way having beautiful places to perform and world class places places to perform second thing i would say that again empowering uh, you know uh, tribal art forms when it comes to music and empowering folk forms when it comes to music where you give them a bigger stage rather than you know having an event and just putting them there for mm-hmm. you know for uh, flavor's sake you know to show that this is the culture of karnataka mm. you know giving them a big stage and making them the main performers mm-hmm. i think that would be really important to give them the respect mm-hmm. of the art form i think i think that would be really important places to perform and empowering uh, local art forms on a big stage is it should be a subject in education system absolutely so the thing about music is that music education is extremely important in schools and i'll explain to you why uh not everybody has to become a musician while st- uh, while studying music in schools but people who have a basic foundation knowledge in music appreciate music better so me as a musician you know i will not try to create music 
where I'm creating it very simple so that everybody will understand and everybody will appreciate. I as a musician, if I know that people will appreciate music and music which is a little more complex, I'll make music of an art form which is slightly higher and better. Mm -hmm. So basically if you have music education in schools, you will get more people who will appreciate better forms of music and that way musicians will be encouraged to make better and better music and more higher quality music and it will uplift the art form in general. Mm -hmm. You know, so I believe music education in schools is very important to uplift the art form itself in, uh, in a state. And, uh, it'll, and I think Karnataka will benefit very highly by making music education compulsory in schools. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ricky Cage. It was wonderful having you in our show. Thank you so much and it, it's been an honor to speak to you again. Thank you. So viewers, this is our proud Indian, proud Kannadiga, Grammy Award winner, Ricky Cage. With this, we are ending this program. Thank you so much.